Good, good, good morning, my wonderful friends. This is Roger Sperm at Fossil University and talking about Cornell today, who I have the highest respect for their physics and science. The, the people I've talked to there were more receptive than anyone I've talked to anywhere, and I've talked to virtually everybody. Now, they are looking for atoms to see them in the most super resolution they can find and they think they have found a really good way to do this however I want to speak to what is it that when you look at this super magnification what are you looking at what are you trying to find there here's what they're doing here it says this image shows an electron pictograph reconstruction of a whatever this is orthodontodate which PRSCO3 crystal zoomed in a hundred million times. Now, that crystal's just sitting there, I'm sure. It's taken in some bits and bits of light, so this it is it's being excited to some very, very tiny degree. And so what are we looking at? We're looking at that excitation coming back. Well what if we could make instead of zooming it by a hundred million times, what if we could make the thing glow a hundred million times brighter because that's what we did okay in a minute I'm gonna go through a couple of microscopes with you but I the way you have to understand this is what Rod and I did was we looked at the actual light particles coming at us emitted from explosive interactions of light not just looking at something laying there that's what they're doing we are we are looking at the actual light particles coming at us exploding spinning all and these are this is no rendition of it this is what comes out of the what's called charged couple device and what is a charged couple device a charge is any energetic value coupling means it's coupled to that particular value and at that point it turns it into a digital signal that's all it is we're seeing charges but we're not just looking at something flat that all, has no real charge to it it's just sort of laying there we're trying to filter light through it through these other devices let me show you different microscopes real quick all right my, I'm sorry my friends I got confused during this presentation I do them in clips and I get a you know a lot of interruptions anyway I forgot about talking about the microscopes and going to show you so I'm filling this back in what happens in a normal microscope and the types of microscopes they're talking about having these extreme resolutions is there's no light coming out from the the thing you're looking at there's no light there's nothing there. All they're doing is picking up what they can get reflective value on. We are looking at a whole different issue. This, this is a very powerful microscope, absolutely. It goes to the computer, has all kinds of stuff. You can see all kinds of things. It's got different settings and all, all this stuff. Yes, but you can only look through little tiny thin sl slices of things. And this one here is a different style. This one here we can look way up to high. I can go way up this whole post. And, and see things. This is the one I use all the time. The other one I haven't used probably a couple of years. Uh, and and but this is what we're really into now. Is what Rod is picking up with this, you know, um, these charge couple devices. And this is nothing more than light. That's light from a red laser. So we're not looking at protons and atoms or anything. If that's light coming from a red laser, it's not atom, atoms. It's not atom big chunks. It's photons. It's electrons. Electrons are two photons put together. Now, I don't know what I'll be showing you going forward, but I'm, like I say, I get, it's, I'm doing too much all at once, and I really should focus in on one thing at a time, but I wake up every morning and I'm hit with 20 different things. My mind just goes into a swirl like that. <laughs> All right, anyway, here it comes. Now, just to explain what we did, we took light from a red laser, which is extremely accelerated, focused, intense light. And when I say accelerated, we accelerated, no question whatsoever because we used a venturi and we could see the wave and then we could see it accelerate we could see the particle we could see it literally divide 
So not only this was it started with light, so it has to be light. As light as light. It's just that's the end of the story here. It's not like we're shooting big bombs out of here. We were shooting light, and then. I will show you what we found, but the photon looks like that, back-to-back -back electrons. Electrons looks like that. Muon looks like a black ball, and white showers are here. Now, they are claiming that they have reached a new limit. See what it says? Uh, and I got a co I contacted these people, all of them up there. Now, let's see if I get anything back from them. It says, the paper's lead doctoral, postdoctoral researcher, Zhen Shen, this doesn't just set a new record. It reached a regime which is effectively going to be the ultimate limit for resolution. Now they're saying that's as much as their best they're going to see is atoms. No, we're seeing electrons and we're seeing actual muons and electron showers, which are the bits of the electrons. That's what I'm seeing. If you could see it any other way, I want to know why I am saying these things that, that are wrong. Because I'll show you why I'm saying the things I'm saying. Now, just to say you're wrong, go away, is not acceptable. I need to say, why am I wrong? If I started with light and the things I will show you are the result, why am I wrong? Now, let's just start out with this. These are the bits and pieces that they have seen and they claim are the smallest bits and pieces that exist. Now, these are from CERN, and what they have seen is these clouds of explosive material, billions and billions of particles smashing together. But they have seen these as the smallest bit, which has appears to have no energy whatsoever. And these are extremely energetic to create showers. So the black ball, when it comes in and it crashes, it comes in and crashes into another medium. And when it does, it just stays the same. It's just a black ball. When this one comes in, it's a white ball and it crashes, it creates these showers. And here's what they are. Now, again, let me just show you something. These are what they're looking for. The high speed particle, which is the electron, and then the muon, which does nothing when it concusses. Now, because they're really seeing these all in bits and pieces, and I can show them to you in bits and pieces, which is just exactly what they see. However, we also see them here tied together as a photon. That is what came out of the laser. That's exactly what came out of the laser. Now, what it does is it creates a wave in front of it because there's a magnetic field surrounding it. So as it goes forward, the wave, as we saw before, creates a big wave and then what, what we did after that you can see this one here is glowing because it's the one leading as it goes forward impulses and it shakes and wobbles and spins and all that stuff now how did we get to this point here's how we got to that point we shot the red laser out, just, just standard red laser nothing special and you would never see anything more than that so you see it glowing this is extremely enhanced I mean it's not it's not changed at all that I know of uh, it's strictly just the light that is seen by a cell phone literally a cell phone now what did we see when we really worked on this thing that's the particle that is the particle it's just the one I showed you before and then we enhanced it and we could see that the leading edge that is forward is the glower that one would glow and that one would glow because they're forward. So you can have upspin, you can have downspin. Now, when that banged into the Venturi, first of all, it gets pulled out of the wave. You see the wave? We saw the wave back there. Here it is right now. It's obviously being elongated forward, just exactly identical to a jet fighter. The jet fighter is the particle. Shoom! Breaking the speed barrier. All right, so let's just realize that Einstein was wrong what he said about light. Light is can accelerate. It obviously can slow down and I can show you that too. I'm, this is the acceleration and here's the slowing down. You see? It's faster here and it's slower there. It's instantaneous after it comes through the accelerator. It accelerates and then it slows back down. It's just the way it works. And, the, and what happens is between the, the light being shot through, and it would never change from that except for the accelerator. And it, it forces all these magnetic regions, which are just big bubbles. They're bubbles like this. They literally are those bubbles. And they are coming, now they're all being crushed into this 
one region. When they did do that, <laughs> everything changes. And what happens there is the pieces just fall apart. The pieces just fall apart. Sounds like a good song. Ah, right, here it is. They're coming in. Baza zoom. Light. Well, light is dark and and white. I can see it. I can see it right there. There it is. But it's undescript. It's sort of just like a little Oreo cookie. And then as it backs up, as it hits before it hits the venturi. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Before it hits the venturi, they display their true nature this is their true nature is to be back to back just like two little bar magnets just like this <laughs> that's, just, that's all they are now if you put them in a different orientation where they they want to push away from each other that's what the normal thing is they push to push to shove the whites will push away and that's why they'll They'll spin and they'll flop and do all this stuff. The black, they don't care at all. The black just is, is riding along with the white. And the black pulls the white back in. That's where the energy value comes in. If we can separate these, which we can, that's where we're going to get some energy. Where does that energy reside? Right there, my friends. The Venturi is here. All of these balls are crushing through this. Black ones, get out of the way. Just get the hell out of the way. We're going to go through here and get everybody get out of the way. And these crush each other. And there is so much energy here. It's just unbelievable. It's quite obvious. That's what the glow is. Now, the other obvious thing is, is that we're looking at glowing explosive gigantic amounts of energy being produced by something that normally does not produce that much energy let's just take this 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 size of a container this is a this is a ph solution but it, let's just say this was gasoline let's say this is gasoline and you're a quarter of a mile away from this thing and you're looking down and you're looking and you don't see this you're not going to see that quarter of a mile away you put a match to that and it explodes and boom, a quarter of a mile away, you're going to see that. We're a quarter of a mile away, we should see it. All right, now not only can we just see them laying around like they are, these are apparently atoms, they're saying. Now, we're down in the electrons, muons, electron showers, not atoms. Atoms are thousands and thousands of times bigger than the particles we're talking about. Now, if that's truly what they're looking at is atoms, we are so much smaller on a scale that's just way below what they're looking at. We are looking at the electrons, which are 0.0005844, something like that, atomic mass units, just absolutely, incredibly minuscule, tiny. These are a minimum of thousands of times bigger than the particles I'm showing you. But they're just laying there. They're emitting energy, absolutely. Everything emits energy until you get down to absolute zero. And then there is no energy left. Energy is nothing more than, than compression, basically. It's all it is. If you took all the compression out, which is to mean to remove all of these extra electrons that have no no reason to be there. They're just say laying there. And the more of them there is in there, the more heat you have. Because the more compression you have. The more compression you have, the more crush you have. That that's how condensation happens and so forth. It's there's pressure and there's and pressure and ends up causing heat and heat ends up causing glow. It's it's just one big pile of energy and what we did was we created that energy so magnificently brilliant that we can see it from miles away <laughs> literally I mean in, in this realm we're just so far away from it but we can see it because it's glowing so intensely these are just laying there doing nothing so, but they're seeing them because they have made their equipment so intense that it can see down into that range. We made that range so intense that our equipment could see it. <laughs>